This video demo is showing how to use Iconotes as a psychiatric prescriber. What you're looking at right now is the chart room. It's basically the home page for Iconotes. It'll say chart room 4, have your name here, working at, and it'll have your office information. You can look up your clients by using the search field here in the center or the file cabinets on the left. To create a new chart, you can use the make a new chart function on the right hand side as well as access the calendar, create therapy groups, send internal messages or communicate with your patients through the patient portal via the message center, access the patient accounts which is the practice management side of the program, and you have settings and directories where you configure all of your initial settings when you first get started. Let's create a new chart. Enter in the person's first name, last name, date of birth, and then I'll click continue. This will take us into the new patient demographics. In this area, you have some minimal fields that need to be populated, which are specifically these red fields. I'm going to generate an ID number, select a gender, enter in a zip code, a home or cell number, and an email. Then we're going to scroll down to the bottom, select a clinician, and if you are the clinician entering this in for yourself, you can just click save at the top. Once I've added a clinician, I can now activate the patient portal, which will send an instantaneous message to the patient requesting that they register for the portal by clicking on the link in the email. You can also activate email reminders, or if you have text messages, you can click on the text message box for it to send text message reminders. Now save your chart. This is your brand new chart face for Samuel Jordan. There's his ID number, date of birth, and age. If the patient has not filled out the history on the patient portal, down below your complete assessment for your psych eval will be purple. If they have completed the information on the patient portal, this button will be neon yellow. Before we go any further, I would like to show you briefly what it looks like from the patient experience on the portal. Email that the patient receives to register for the portal appears as such. It will say, welcome to your patient portal. Your healthcare provider has created an online patient portal for your use. Please go to this address to complete your registration. All communication from the patient portal will come from no reply at patientonlineportal.com. The patient will click the link and then be taken to the registration screen where they'll register for the portal. At this point, they'll proceed and they'll be able to log into the portal. They'll be given a terms and conditions, which they may accept. Here in the patient portal, you have the ability to customize the welcome page. On my patient portal, I have instructions for the patient so they know what to do. They can go to their profile. They can fill in their address, add additional information, emergency contacts, ethnicity, religion, spouse's name, pharmacy, family contacts, and other additional information. They'll click the Save button at the bottom and be given a pop-up message to confirm that they have saved their profile indeed. They can also fill out their patient history, such as their history of present illness, what is the reason for their visit, any other symptoms they're experiencing, and past psych history, medical history, social history, developmental history, and family history. Once the patient has completed this information, they'll click the Submit button. A pop-up message will be given to let the patient know that they have completed that patient history and it has been saved. Then they can move on to other areas within the patient portal, such as filling out forms, notice a privacy practice, clicking submit, and the form is automatically saved on the portal, in our upload site, and in the patient chart. They can complete the rest of these forms as is appropriate. And again, clicking submit when done. The patient portal does come with four built-in forms, and you can also create your own forms. They can also authorize other users to have access to their patient portal for which they are responsible. They can enter in the email address and give them specific permissions. They also have the ability to deauthorize users that they have previously given access. They can see a list of their appointments, medications they've been prescribed, their CCDA if appropriate, and they can also send messages through the portal Once done, they can log out. Let's return back to Iconotes. Now we are back in Iconotes. Here under Samuel Jordan, you can see that the complete assessment is now yellow with this bright red text letting you know that they have completed the historical information. The program will prompt you to decide whether you want to include their responses in your assessment. Here on the psychiatric evaluation, 
I can now see I'm on the History of Present Illness tab for a prescriber. The responses from the patient portal have been included here into my note. I can go and add additional information using the standard buttons on the left, which come with the program, typing into the yellow field, which is a free text field, and I can also create custom buttons on the right to help generate preset text that I've populated myself. Here I'm going to go over to the left if this person has depression. Here's the history, precipitant, described as, maybe a major illness or injury or occupational issues. Maybe they're having issues with their primary support group. As you can see, as I'm clicking on these items on the left, the pre-populated text is going here into my note. It's highlighted in yellow so I don't lose my place, and I just gravitate back to the previous column and continue to work left to right, top to bottom. If you click something accidentally, simply highlight it in the field and hit delete, backspace, or you can right click cut. Continue on through your list and when you're done, click the back button at the top to return back to the previous screen. The program is saving automatically every keystroke and there is a red X next to depression to let you know where you've been and also that you've documented the severity is moderate. You'll continue through any other symptoms that you'd like to document and then move on through the second column. As you work through these, again, it will populate more detail into your note. And you can move from tab to tab, working left or right through the tabs across the top, and you can see the responses that the patient has populated via the portal. You can add additional information, or you can leave as is. The mental status exam is the next to last tab. And again, we have standard buttons on the left and a free text field in the center and custom buttons on the right. If you're using the standard buttons, the program will trigger uh, specific elements that are captured by using our buttons to document that. As you can see, the dot elements are populating on the right, which is triggering um, points in our coding matrix, which works on the background for ENM coding. I'm going to move on to the very last tab. And for prescribing, we do have an ePrescribe function, which we are partnered with Dr. First. When you click on that button, it's going to take you into the ePrescribing platform. Your known known drug allergies, if there are none, or if they do have an allergy, there's a drop-down menu that you can select from for common ones. You'll also need to enter in a pharmacy. There's a list of pharmacies in here that you can choose from. Simply select the pharmacy you'd like to use, and you can add up to five pharmacies per patient. Select the medication you'd like to prescribe, click Find, and it'll give you a list of the different dosages and the state of the medication that it's available in, such as liquid, tablet, capsule, film, etc. Once you select the dosage, you'll put in the so your SIG details, take one tablet by mouth once a day as directed, name, brand, or generic, and you can also add additional information uh, for the patient, such as if you have a taper or titration. When you click continue, it's going to show you, preview that prescription. And you can choose to add this to your favorites list. That way, that when, next time that you prescribe this medication, it will be available from your drop-down menu. Once you have prescribed your medication, simply enter in your signature passphrase. And if you're prescribing controlled substances, you will need to enter in your two-factor authentication process. Go ahead and click send. Now the medication has been sent to the pharmacy. Click the Back to Iconotes button to return back to your note, and the program will download the medication here into your note. Then you can move on through the rest of the steps, such as the instructions, recommendations, and plan, the diagnosis. You can do your suicide violence risk assessment if you did any therapy during the session, and then move on to number five for your code. The e &M code function here has given me a 99204. If you would like to review this information for further, there is a show ENM code function where you can see the matrix and what you need to get the code or how you got that code. You're going to click done when you're done, or if you'd like to change that code, there is a drop down menu that you can select differently if you wish. Okay, you just file level of care when you'd like to see this person again, and then you can compile this note. The compile button will aggregate all of that data from all of those tabs into one big comprehensive document. And here's our finalized note. You can spell check and then sign it electronically. If there's any document where you need to capture the patient signature, which this may not be example, but perhaps for a treatment plan or any other kind of form, there is a drop down menu where you can capture the signature right here on the screen.
If you'd like to clear the signature, maybe you were just exploring it, you can simply clear it. To view the PDF of the finalized document, you have a View PDF button and you can see your completed note. You can print this note at any time. You can access the schedule from here, go to the patient account, make a referral, create a clinical or discharge summary, or even change the note title. To return back to the main page of the chart, you can click on the chart face button and you can see there's our assessment and it's already populated some of the information here on the panels on the left. To create a progress note, simply click progress note prescriber. You have a comprehensive layout as well as a simplified layout and simply work through the numbers. to see I'm in my mental status exam. And you can also enter in different vitals. There is a vital signs log in the upper right hand corner. If you have been capturing these over a period of time, you can gauge how they have improved or um, hopefully not worsened, but hopefully improved. The program will also calculate the BMI based on the height and weight that you've populated. If any of the results are abnormal, the program will prompt you to document a follow-up plan. I'm gonna continue to part two. And in part two, you can see the medications. If you want to refill the medication, you just go to ePrescribe. You can renew the medication, prescribe it, stop it, or if perhaps they've been prescribed medication by someone else and they can't remember call what it is, you can look at the medication history. And the history will show any medications they've been prescribed by any prescriber um, over the past 30 days, 90 days, 180 days, one or two years. Okay, there are some stipulations that um, may exclude certain details and the information is populated right here so you can see what kind of medications are not uh, tracked by the database that's holding this information. Okay, we're going to return to the summary and let's add another medication. Let's add Abilify. And then here I'm just going to put in my signature passphrase and click send. Now I have both medications and I can go back to Iconotes. My meds are downloaded here into my note. I can continue on with the rest of my instructions and you can create your custom buttons very easily by clicking create custom button, give it in a title and enter in the information that you want it to populate into the note. For the code you can see that there is a standalone code for the therapy. Once I do the ENM code for me which is the auto code function it will adjust. You also have the ability to change those manually, follow up when you want them to come back and then save as a progress note. This will compile all of that information again into a comprehensive note for you. Okay, spell check, sign, and are you all done. And that is just a brief demonstration of how Iconotes works for psychiatric prescriber documentation.